How, how much did the club spend on, on the development before a brick was laid? Before? Before a brick was laid. I no idea. When I left, we had not, we probably spent, well, the architect's fees and so on. I remember Jeff Mann's company, RHWL, with an a, a architect. Their total at that time was about 700,000, but that was right up to the plans to build the stadium and, you know, do all the, the roadways and so on. Um, there was quite a lot of commitment but not actually an awful lot spent. In other words, buying the uh, caravans and uh, that were around the top of the thing, road works to be done, things that would have come under 106 agreements, which is, you know, if you want to build this, you have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we had two full-time staff in Highfield Road. One was um, a banker, um, and the other one was a uh, project manager. And those two were there for, I hired both of them. Um, so, you know, it wasn't enough to kill anyway. And it certainly wasn't because we'd got the money, we'd sold Highfield Road, remember, as well. So we were, we could have funded it through. But it, all we needed at that time was, um, you know, a council's better than a bank. If you want to borrow money, and the council will um, guarantee it in effect, you buy the, you borrow the money cheaper than if you can get anybody to to secure the loan, because the council can't go bust and such. Mm. How how was your relationship with the council? I only ever, I I think uh, I used to no, I was fine. I used to go and see them. Mom, John McGuigan and I was. Uh, one always tries to be um, helpful, um, pleasant and so on with um, officialdom because officialdom can be you know, a pain if it wants to be and you don't need that, especially in planning offices and council offices and so on or any sort of civil service area. Um, you know, these people are not entrepreneurs, they're not business people as such, you know, they have a view about things that um, some people wouldn't, you know, it's a bit like people doing the Brexit negotiations, if you like, that, you know, they've never had to do a deal like that before and, you know, it, it's shown itself. Um, so I think in the case of the council, I'm trying to remember who was about then. John Mutton, I think, was probably... I don't, know whether, I don't think he was the leader of the council, and I can't remember now. But principally, we dealt with McGuigan. Mm. Obviously, the role of the council and, and the Higgs charity became greater over time and after, after you left the club. Mm. But is, is that something you contemplate if you put yourself in those I shoes? can't help you pass my yeah. date. But if you were in those shoes at that time... Is, is that something you think you'd have done? I'd have got it done. You'd have got it done? Yeah, of course we would. Yeah. So no you, question. You, no wouldn't, question. you wouldn't have contemplated a partnership with the council? No. No oh, hell. Didn't need it. What it could have done was, by which stage we trimmed it back from the sliding roof and pitch and everything anyway. But that's fine. You know, the World Cup had gone and... and um, you know, we we put on though the the blimp, if you like, on the end um, for concerts and all of that. But that's a lot cheaper than doing a roof, and a lot cheaper than putting a sliding pitch in and out and so on. Um, but it made sense. So you scaled back the ambitions. Yeah, but that that doesn't cost anything. It saved a lot of money to to scale it back. Um, but you know, if you've got the money, as I said to you, 66 from Tesco, um, and then you've got the ongoing income from all the other retail. If you borrow another 20 million, whatever it is, and you've got the income at 1.6 million, you know, you've covered it anyway. So the key thing was the sale of the land? The sale of the land? To Tesco's. That, that was a key thing in the whole Of course, thing. he couldn't do it without. Mm. So, 
that stadium could not have been built without Tesco or the Tesco development without the, they called it a district shopping centre. That's what was the whole thing about. There was no other way that that developed. And that's, as I said to you a little earlier, you know, the deal that when Paul Fletcher, who's a very experienced stadium developer and design, you know, knew what he was doing, when he saw the deal and he said, if that was the deal that was done, it was a deal of a lifetime. And it was the deal of a lifetime. But it wasn't Coventry City's deal. And it's a Coventry City, no, nothing to do with the others. Nothing to do with the Higgs Trust. Nothing to do with uh, ACLs and um, councils and so on. Councils should have been there to support it. And support it not by putting a load of money in. There was money coming from um, whatever they call Advantage it. Advantage West Midlands? Hmm? Was it Advantage West Midlands? Yeah, Midlands? exactly. And, and the European money came in and so on. All of that came in to help. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's tragic what has happened um, and it was unnecessary and what's happened since is even worse really because, um, you know, but I, I can't speak on that because I wasn't involved in it.